everything with scatter plots and lines of fit. Okay, the nice part about this section, it builds into our project that we're going to do on linear regression. And that actually is used all the time in the real world. There's tons of jobs in analytics or uh, people that do research that use regression lines to see uh, like how good our statistics are for something. Or, uh, for example, like medicine, they, they figure out how, how good the medicine works and um, depending on its like past statistical history and things like that. Uh, so this is a really good section that we're getting into right now. Um, and so we really got to focus in on, on that line of fit that we're going to use. So the first thing, bivariate data, data with two variables. Well, the word bi, that means two things, like bicycle, right? Bicycle's got two wheels. And then variant, that's like variable, right? It's got two variables. Um, so we're always dealing with two variables with our data. And then our scatter plot, I'm sure you've dealt with this before and graphed them when you're in elementary school, but we're just putting dots on a graph to see a relationship between this set of data. And it's gonna be pretty easy how the relationship that we're looking for. Uh, we have three types of relationships or three types of correlation that we say. In the first one, my data is going up, right? As the X goes up, the Y is going up. So we say this is a positive correlation. So I could say positive or positive correlation. In the next one, as the X goes up, the Y goes down. So they're opposite, so we say that is a negative correlation. And lastly, if you take a look, it's really hard to tell. If the data's got all scattered around and it's really difficult to tell if it's going up or down, we say there's really no correlation here. It's not really going up, it's not really going down. There's not much I can say about it. And then we use this line of fit, or sometimes we say line of best fit, to model a trend to make predictions. And this line of fit, it's got to be a straight line. Okay, It doesn't have to go through the origin or anything like that. But it's like the average of all your points, average of your scatter plot. That's what I try to think. It's kind of the average of the points on my scatter plot. So if I try to draw a line of fit into my positive correlation, it kind of goes like, right through the middle of all my points somewhere, something like that. So that's pretty close, right? Should be just as many points on the one side of the line as the other side. It try to go right through the middle of them. Whereas my negative correlation, now it's gonna be going downwards because it's negative, so it's gonna be somewhere in there. Okay, not too bad. It, and that's why today, it's, it's just kind of an estimate. It's on your end to see how close you can get it. Uh, when we work with the, the, the regression lines and our regression line calculator on the project, It'll be an exact line. And with the no correlation, you can't really draw a line of best fit, right? So yeah, that's just a little question mark. I mean, I could throw something in. It's just, I don't know. It's just, there's no correlation. I can't really draw a line of fit with that. So we're only going to look with uh, lines of fit on things that correlate. So let's try an example here. Uh, determine whether the graph shows a positive, negative, or no correlation. Describe its meaning. Well, we should be able to take a look. It's going down, right? As the years go up, uh, the students per computer is going down, so that means there is a negative correlation. And if you think slopes, you should be good, right? It's got like a negative slope. It's going downwards. And then it says, describe its meaning in the situation. Well, it looks like what? Each year, the number of students per computer goes down, right? As the years goes up, each year, the number of students per computer goes down. Just look at your labels. That's going to help you out. Well, I just erased all my dots. That wasn't good. Uh, there was something like this, right? Okay, that's close enough. So each year, the number of students of students per computer went down, or goes down. Good. Years increases, number of students per computer decreases, hence the negative relationship. All right, now let's create our own scatter plot. It says the table shows the growth of the world population. Identify the independent and dependent variables. Make a scatter plot. Well, let's do the independent, dependent. I'm just going to put a big I and a D. Well, you got to think about which one depends on the other. Well, the population, it's going to be time always is the independent, right? Time can never depend on something else. So the population depends on the year, right? So that's why it's the dependent. Population depends on the year. 
Okay, time, and just remember, time is always independent. Well, let's go ahead and graph these bad boys. And remember, we, all, we talked about that before, years or time always goes on the x-axis. Okay, so I'm going to start out, I can start off at 1650. I'm going to put that, I'm just going to start putting some dashes here. Make sure your dashes are consistent. Might help to use some graph paper for this. So uh, you don't have giraffes that are not drawn to scale very well. I'm going to start at 1650 and I might count up by 50 years. So the next one would be 1700. Then I got 1750 and then 1800 and then 1850, 1900, 1950, 2020, 50. All right, and now we're gonna graph the popular, I should put years down here, I don't have a lot of room, but I should put years down there, or the year, that would be my label, I should have a label. And then on the y-axis, I should have my population. So I might count by, you know, this is going up 500, that's going up 1,000, 2,000. I might count by 500, so that'd be pretty good. I should give me too many dashes, so. 5,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500. 3,000, 4,000, 4,000. Is that going to be enough? And I might have to make my dashes just a little bit smaller. Let's go 5,000. Oh, yeah, try to make it as good as I can. So each one's 500. And then I'm just going to write my thousands up here 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. So 6,000 will be up here somewhere. Oh yeah, let's graph in, extend my line a little bit. Graphing my points. So I got 1650, 500, and 1850, 1000. So I'm going over to 1850 and up to 1000. And then I got 1930 and 2000. I'm gonna do the best I can. Okay, then I got 1975. And 4,000, boy, this is going up pretty quick here. Uh, this seems a little high. I'm going to break it down just a little bit. 1975 and 4,000. Okay, and lastly, 2,004 and 6,400. That's way up here. So we're looking like way up there. Okay. Well, what can I do with this now? Remember we did that line of best fit? Let me try to draw that in there. So if I think about it, remember, it doesn't go through the origin. It might, but it doesn't, doesn't have to. It usually doesn't. Remember, I want my line to go, like, half the point should be on one side, half the point's on the other, pretty close. It's kind of the average, right? So think about where this line would go. You know, if I think about it, this point right here is kind of right in the middle. You know, these two should be on the one side. These two should be on the other side. So that's what I'm guessing. My line's going to go somewhere like that. So I'm going to draw... I'm going to go right through that point, actually. Let's do something like that. That looks pretty good. Not too bad. Remember, it's got to be a straight line. It can't curve. Straight line. All right, now let's see what we can do with this. It says, use the equation for the line of fit in the last example to predict the world's population in 2025. So here's the key. I need an equation for the line of fit. Well, how do we write equations of lines? You bet. We're going to our slope-intercept form. So I want to write an equation in slope-intercept form where I can plug in 2025 for the x, right, because x represents my years, to solve for y, to solve for the world's population. I'll put x there, y for the population, okay? So I need to come up with a slope, and I need to find the y-intercept of my last equation. Well, don't just look at your graph and try to guess, okay? Remember how we found slope before? You need two points. Well, if you look at it, I have one of the points. This is kind of nice that it happened to go through one of these points. So this is the point 1975 and 4,000. So there's one point. Now I just got to pick another point on my line. Well, none of the other points work. I can't just pick two points from my table. So I got to pick a point that's on that line. So now I have to just do my best guess here. I might just look at 1750. I'm going to go from 1750. That would be this point right here. If I go across... That's at about, so I'm at 1750, and looks like in between 1,000 and uh, 1,500, so about 1,250. So pretty close. So I could have said maybe even 1,300 there. 
Uh, but you just got to have two points. So I'm going to use these two points. And I'm going to find the slope of those two points. So remember, subtract your y's on top, subtract your x's on bottom. So I'm going to take 4,000 minus 1250 over, well, I started with 4,000, so I'm going to start with 1975 minus 1750. So you'll find your slope first. And when I subtract those, it looks like I get 2,750 over 225. So 2,750 over 225. And I, I might get a repeating decimal. I might simplify this fraction. So 2,750 divided by 225. I'm going to write it as a fraction in my calculator. 12 and 2 ninths I got. 12 and 2 ninths. And I like to write them improper. So I'm going to take 9 times 12 and then plus 2. 9 times 12, which is 108 plus 2. So 110 over 9. So 110 over 9. Remember we like to have a rise and a run? I'm going to write the decimal as well. I'm going to say or. I'll put the decimal as well, which happened to be 12.2, 12 repeating. See, I want to use 110 over 9 because this is going to be more exact than this guy. So I found the slope. Remember, pick two points that are on the line and find your slope. So 110 over 9. So I can plug that in. 110 over 9, x. And now I still got to find my plus b. I don't know. Well, how do I solve for that b? Use one of those points that you just came up with. Remember, I can plug in a point that's on my graph into the x and the y. So what's one of those points that I know? I'll just grab the one that I know for sure that's on there. 1975, 4,000. So I grabbed one of the points. So 4,000 was the y. And 1975 was the X, because that was the year, plus B. We got to solve for B. So I'm taking 110 over 9 times 1975. And I get a decimal here. So I get uh, about 24138.888 repeating. So I'm going to say 0.9. But I'm going to take what I have on my calculator, and I'm just going to subtract it from 4,000 right away. So 4,000 minus that number, right, because I'm subtracting to solve for B. And I get a negative 20,138.9 about. Okay, well that's a negative, right? Negative, okay. So there's my B, so now I gotta plug that back into my equation here. Got to plug it in here. So there's my equation for that line. So I got 110 over 9x minus 20,138.9. Takes a little bit of work to come up with that. Well, now we're going to estimate the population in 2025. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in for x here. So this takes a little bit of work. 110 over 9 times 2025. And then we'll subtract 2138.9. So 110 over 9 times 20, 25, minus 20,138.9, and I get 4611.1. So 4,611.1, and what was our, our, our label for that? Well, population, so people in millions. So I'll say people, million people, I guess, right? Million people. I could say the population in millions would be fine too. So is that a good estimate? In 2025, we're saying that our population would be about 4,600 million. Well, what was it in 2004? It was already more than that. So is that a very good estimate? It's not, is it? Okay, so that means what we're going to find out in our linear regression project tomorrow, that this data does not correlate very well. It is a positive correlation, but the line of best fit that I came up with does not correlate very well. Okay, and we'll see that in the project. But you basically just find that equation of line and plug in to make an estimate from your line of fit. Okay, so not too many, but it takes a little bit of time.